Good afternoon and welcome to 365 Days of Amazing Stories with Theo Mayer. Here we are on day, what day? 157. And I'm continuing with the stories from 1001 Arabian Nights. And we've gotten into Zubaydah, hearing the stories of the calendars. There's shaven-headed, no eyebrows, no facial hair, men that she entertained that night. The second calendar begins his story. And he turns to Zebeda and he tells her that if she wants to know how he lost his right eye, he would have to tell her the story of his entire life. She said, fine. I would like to hear it. And so he began. Now, it turns out that he was born the son of a king, and his father immediately saw that he was very bright, very intelligent, took in information very quickly. And so, at a young age, his father had him given the best of educations. And as a young prince, he took a special interest in language and in stories and became what was known as a grammatician. And he learned everything that was in the Quran and everything that had to do with Muhammad and was able to recall basically everything that was in the Quran and did not stop there, but began to learn the spiritual texts of cultures, India included. Now his reputation as a scholar spread and it became, he became known basically throughout the inhabited lands around his father's kingdom. Now it happened that the Sultan of the Indies heard about him and found it very curious that a young prince <clears throat> would be interested <clears throat> in such things. And he wanted to meet him. And so he sent to his father an invitation that he could, the prince could come and study there in his kingdom and learn the texts that they considered important. And the prince's father thought that this was a great idea and also thought that his son's horizons would be expanded that he would learn more about the world, that he would become more compassionate, that he would just be a better person as a result of having this experience of travel. And so it was arranged. And one of the most trusted men in the king's court, an ambassador, was sent off with the young prince and a fairly well armed group of men and off they went on this journey that would take a couple of months in order to get to the kingdom of the sultan of the indies and so off they go now they'd been traveling about a month when out of a dust cloud of well chaos appeared a band of robbers surrounded the group and it was clear that they were grossly outnumbered two to one the ambassador thought it was foolish for them to try to fight against this group of robbers the prince seeing what was about to take place that they would all be captured the ambassador 
meeting with the, the head robber and making arrangements for their lives to be spared, the young prince decides that he does not want any part of it. And he's on his horse and he gives spur to that, spurs to that horse and takes off. Now there was a band of the robbers that rode after him. And one of the robbers wounded his horse with an arrow, but the chase was, well, so passionate that the horse just kept running as if nothing had happened. And the robbers, they gave up on the chase because the prince's horse was just way faster than theirs. He rode on and on at a gallop until his horse faltered and fell to the ground. And as it was falling, he was able to leap off of the horse, get onto the ground safely. And he was in the wilds in the desolate part of the world. And he traveled from one place to another trying to figure out how to get to some civilization for about a month. Fortunately, part of his education back in a time where people must have been enlightened as to what it was important to tell or teach their young people, he knew how to get along comfortably in the environment. He knew what plants he could eat. He knew where to find water. And he knew how to make shelter for himself. So in the cold of the night, he could stay warm. And so he traveled through the wilderness day after day until he came to a very, very large city, beautiful city as he entered. And after a month living in the same garments, you can imagine the prince was not looking much like a prince. His garments were torn, they were dirty. His shoes, he had given up on them because they were so worn out. He came into the city and it just so happened that there on the outskirts of the city, there was a tailor who had a shop in his home. Their eyes met as the prince was walking by. And the tailor could see right away that the garb of this young man did not fit who he really was. And he beckoned him over. Taylor invited him in, poured him some tea, and they began to talk. The prince had not spoken to anyone for all of this time and poured his story out. The tailor heard it all. And his response to the prince was to never tell anyone within the city this story. Because he said that the king who ruled over the kingdom he was now in was his father's sworn enemy. And if anyone knew who he was, it would not go well with him. Well, the prince recovered from the ordeals of his travel there at the tailor's house. It took him quite a long time to gain his strength back, for his appetite to come back, and for him to feel back to his normal, vigorous self. And as he did so, the tailor came to him at one point and asked him if he had in any way a profession? Was there anything that he could do in order to provide for himself in this time that was, well, not, let's say, ideal? The prince told him, well, I'm, I'm a scholar, I'm, I'm a grammatician, and that's what I do. I, I can write things, I can recount things, I have many scriptures memorized. And the tailor said, this, this won't do you any good at all. What I would suggest is that you become well, a supplier of firewood 
I would suggest that you go off into the woods each day. You cut wood and bring it in in order to sell it to people in the city. In this way, you will gain some income. You will remain incognito. And you'll be able to provide for yourself until you can return to your father's kingdom. Well, the prince didn't really like this idea because he was a prince. He'd never worked like this before, but he also knew that the tailor had his best interests in mind. And so he agreed. The tailor provided him with a cord in order to bind his wood and a hatchet. And so the next day, off the prince went into the woods with the other woodcutters and began to cut wood each day. And he found even after that first day of being very inexperienced, he was able to bring enough wood back into the town in order to make a little bit of money. And as his experience grew, he was strong and healthy. The amount of wood that he was able to bring into town each day was significant. And he began to make a good sum of money each day while he had his room and board at the tailor's. Of course, he gave money to the tailor for his lodging and his food. But he began to build up his wealth. Now, there was one day when he was out in the woods cutting. And he came across a tree, and at the bottom of which there was a chain found this rather odd. So he took, care, he took hold of this chain and he followed it. And the chain was attached to, well, uh, covering over the earth. Well, he took hold of the chain and he pulled on it in this covering. The stone covering gave way and opened up. There was a stairway, and he decided that he would go down this stairway and see what was there. He did, taking with him his hatchet as a weapon of defense. As he descended into this underground cavern, immediately it was dark and darker. But then off in the distance, he saw that there was some light. He made his way down the stairs until it became level ground. It began to make his way now across the ground and it became brighter and brighter until it was like a complete underground world. And before him, coming out from the light of beautiful palace, was the most beautiful woman he had ever seen. She was walking straight toward him, and so to make her journey shorter, he began to walk quickly in her direction. Of course, Scheherazade stopped the story there, and we, we, we will as well. Tomorrow, We'll continue this story of the second calendar and find out what happens next. Thanks for joining and enjoy the rest of your day.